So yesterday, I gave you guys a poll, and the poll was pretty simple. You pick one microphone out of these four microphones, and it's gonna be the only microphone you can use. So the choices were a Shure SM7B, a Shure SM57, an Electro Voice RE20, and the Rode Procaster. As expected, you guys did not disappoint. The SM7B blew the rest of them out of the water. 50% of all the votes cast, SM7B. And that makes sense. In my time here on YouTube, that was 100% the answer I expected. But let me tell you why I disagree. So whenever I started this channel, I basically just thought I was going to be getting musicians because I was giving recording advice, but I was shocked at the sheer amount of people that were streamers, gamers, voiceover artists, ASMR artists, even like radio hosts and stuff. They all started tuning into the channel and that's awesome. And I also started noticing a pattern with that whole side of the recording industry. All of these industries, and also like YouTubers as well, glorify this microphone. I've never seen a microphone become trendy. The way I see it, a combination of really targeted marketing, gear acquisition syndrome, like just wanting to buy the best gear, and also an over influx of content creators using this microphone have sort of manufactured a really high demand and a really high desirability for the Shure SM7B. And I get it, it's a really alluring design. It looks like a really professional broadcast microphone. And also <laughs> when you speak into it, you just feel like you're saying something important. So let me tell you why I think this microphone isn't the microphone you should be going after though, especially if you are of a certain content creation demographic, which I'm gonna touch on later. Now, let me ask you two questions. First one, if you're using the Shure SM7B, what are you using it for? Now, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be basically two answers to this, broadcast vocal recording and live vocal recording. That's what the Shure SM7B is known for. Second question, what else are you gonna need for this microphone? And I'm sure a large portion of you just said cloud lifter or extra preamp gain, whatever hardware device that happens to amount to. And while I've made plenty of videos showing that you don't necessarily need a cloud lifter and it's a part of the marketing behind this microphone, you can get by with just some slight preamp noise and you can even get rid of that with just some very simple mixing, EQing, and even like a gate or something like that. But a large portion of people buying an SM7B are still gonna buy a cloud lifter no matter what I say, I'm just a small YouTuber. And all of that is gonna amount to around $600. Essentially what I'm saying is this microphone is a $600 investment when all is said and done for a lot of people. And that amount of investment for the audio quality that you're getting, it's just not necessary. And I'm not just gonna leave you by saying, oh, you actually don't need to buy the Shure SM7B. It's actually not worth the price. I wanna show you a microphone that I think can do an extremely similar, if not identical job for about a sixth the price. So let's go back to those two questions. The first one, what are you gonna use the microphone for? With the Shure SM7B, broadcast recording and live vocal recording. What if you could have a microphone that is also great at recording voiceover and also great at recording live vocals, but also is known for snare, guitar cabs, acoustic guitar, toms, overheads. It's essentially considered the most flexible microphone in the music recording industry. And the second question, what else are you going to need to buy? Okay, I'm gonna spare you guys the surprise. I'm just gonna tell you what it is. The microphone I'm talking about is the Shure SM57. It's the microphone I use in all my voiceovers if you know it's not about a specific microphone. And the only thing you're gonna to need to buy with the Shure SM57 if you're using it for like voiceover, gaming, streaming, things like that, is a pop shield. Now, there is one that Shure actually sells himself. I believe it's called the A2WS. It looks amazing, fits impeccably. Or you could be like me and borrow a pop shield from a really cheap newer microphone and shove it on top of the clip until it fits rather snugly. And no, you don't need any external gain on the Shure SM57, where the Shure SM7B has around 60 dBs of gain, which is just outside the most common audio interface's preamp gain levels. The Shure SM57 comes in at 56 dBs of gain, which is gonna set your preamp to uh, probably around three o'clock, and you're not gonna get as much noise from your preamps with the Shure SM57. Again, you can still use it. I don't want you thinking that you need to purchase a $130 product to make your microphone usable, but yes, it will reduce the noise, uh, which is already relatively quiet on most interfaces. And oh yeah, it's $100. Like $500 to $600? 
$100. See, here's the problem, and here's my main takeaway from this video. If you're not in a music studio, if you're not a musician, the Shure SM57 isn't marketed towards you. For gaming and streaming and content creation, you guys are marketed essentially high-end USB microphones, and then later down the lines, like the Rode Pod mic, the Rode Procaster, and at the very high end of the spectrum, the Shure SM7B and the Electro Voice RE20. I mean, if you've come here from a music background, the fact that I'm bringing up a Shure SM57 should not be surprising to you. This video should almost seem obvious. In reality, all these microphones can be used as a crossover between all of these different things. It's just a matter of marketing. And the SM57 is an incredibly affordable cost for an incredibly usable and incredibly iconic sound. And I've said this before in other videos, I'll say it again, the Shure SM58 and the Shure SM57 are essentially the same microphone. One just has the more iconic round mesh grill on it. And oftentimes I find people don't want to use that microphone just because of the fact that it looks like a stereotypical microphone, like the microphone we all draw when we're children. <laughs> if you slam a nice looking pop shield on top of the Shure SM57, it's going to look uh, probably a little bit more appealing to you, more broadcast aesthetic focused. But yeah, the overlap between the microphones that are marketed towards musicians and the microphones that are marketed towards like streamers and voiceover artists, the margin of similar microphones is rather thin, but that shouldn't mean that you don't use these other microphones. They're still perfectly usable. Yeah, I want you to leave this video knowing this. And honestly, I'll probably make this into another video in the future. There is a distinct marketing campaign for streamers and gamers and voiceover artists that is distinctly different than the products that are marketed towards musicians. I don't want you thinking that one microphone marketed towards streamers is gonna be completely unusable for the music industry. And you should take advantage of the fact that one of these microphones is legendary and iconic and extremely useful and one sixth the price of the microphone that all of you have your eyes on. All right, quickly, I wanna talk about the anatomical differences between these two microphones to give you a better idea of where the Shure SM57 sits when compared to the Shure SM7B. So the Shure SM7B is known for having a really nice low-end beefy sound, which makes a lot of voices sound radio friendly. And the reason is because of this large resonance chamber on the back of the microphone, which builds up a lot of those low mid frequencies that people seem to find satisfying. In addition to that, this piece, the, the foam pop filter, the capsule, the part that actually picks up sound is really far down. It's actually more towards the middle of the microphone which means your mouth, the source of the audio, can only get so close to it. This is gonna reduce the proximity effect, meaning the closer I get to the microphone, the more bass frequencies you hear, uh, which leads to an uneven and inaccurate sound for the, the sound source that you're recording. So that prohibits the proximity effect from happening on the Shure SM7B. Now the Shure SM57, although it's based off of a very similar design and it's built by the exact same company, has a few things. It has a higher presence boost around the high mid range and the high range. And also you can put your mouth right up to the coil, which means you might notice an increase in the proximity effect, more bass in your voice, but hey, that might be desirable for you. And also you're gonna get like the low cuts and all the things that happen on the back of the Shure SM7B, there's, there's nothing on the 57. But if you were that put off by the differences in how these two microphones sound enough to spend an extra $500, you can just EQ the Shure SM57 pretty easily to sound near identical to the Shure SM7B. If you're not an audio engineer, it's not too difficult, just Google it. Julian Krauss did a really amazing video on it. I did a video on it. It's not as good, but I'm gonna link it. Yeah, and besides the different like roll-offs and pads that you get on the back of the Shure SM7B, that's roughly the difference. Again, the Shure SM57 is a, a sixth of the price you're gonna pay if you're paying for a cloud lifter as well. More flexible is going to be more user-friendly for a lot of audio interfaces and arguably is the more iconic microphone. I will defend this microphone until the end of days. But hey, these things are also indestructible. Let me give you some surprising facts about this very microphone, this individual microphone. It's been underwater. I threw it into a mosh pit. The other day, I dropped it on the floor, my tiled floor. It cracked the tile. It was fine. It cracked the tile. This, done by a microphone. Are you kidding me? It's indestructible. In fact, it's a danger to whatever it's hitting. Thank you for listening to me rant. 
I hope I at least saved you some money if you're considering the SM7B. If you like the Shure SM57, I promise you're not going to be disappointed. It's just as flexible, and if you put that really nice pop shield on it, I think it looks just as good, because let's be honest, some of your opinion is going to be influenced by the aesthetic choices of the microphone. Thanks so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram at RealAudioHaze. If you want lessons, email me at RealAudioHaze at gmail.com. That is all. I'll see you in the next video.